Good afternoon everyone, it's the afternoon of the 1st of January 2019, which is a kind of scary prospect. I hope everyone's having a very good new year, I wish you all the best for the coming year. I'm personally hoping it's going to be better than 2018, which was a bit rough for various personal reasons. Um, so I this is my second go at um, recording this video because the first time I tried it a couple of days ago, Christopher wanted to co-host again but it was a bit too enthusiastic and I'm not sure it entirely worked. If at some point I get um, proficient enough with the editing software I might do a blooper reel. It was that bad. Um, so I'm here today to just give you a quick recap of how I got on in 2018 with my crafting stuff and to tell you my plans for 2019. Um, to start off, hello, I'm Caroline. I'm from Leeds in the UK and I can be found around the interwebs on, on my blog at carolinescorner.co.blogspot.co.uk and on Instagram and Twitter as at Caroline A. Kemp and Caroline is spelt with a K. Show notes for this episode will be on my blog and I will put the link in the box below. Um, yesterday I had an email from YouTube to tell me I'm up to 100 subscribers so thank you all very much. I really appreciate you all subscribing and all the likes and comments I get. I know I'm not the swiftest at replying to them but I am hoping I can get better in the next year. I do, however, really appreciate all the interactions. Thank you very much. So, get my notes. We'll start off with the stitching. Um, it, I had a better year for finishes than I've had previously. I had seven in total. Um, most of them were very small and one I can't show you because it's a gift for somebody and they haven't got it yet. Um, so my biggest finish, um, if you saw my last video you'll know I was almost at finishing Prairie Garden from The Drawn Thread. Here we go. I, uh, last time I think I just got the bottom band to go. So I finished that up I'm very very pleased with how it's turned out. It is stitched on the um, recommended summer khaki 32 count summer khaki linen with the MPI silks that came with the chart pack. As always with one of Cynthia's designs it was a lovely lovely thing to stitch and I now have all four of these designs stitched. I have Alpine Garden, which is still to be framed, and over here I have Wildfire Garden and Cloister Garden above it. Um, so I do need to get the other two framed and then get them on the wall with all together. Very chuffed to have that one done. As I, my other finishes, since I uh, last spoke to you are oh, Christmas ornaments for the children. I give them a choice, I show, I give them a ornament, one of the Just Cross Stitch ornament editions to look at and then they each choose an ornament. And if in Christopher's case they don't choose an ornament, I choose one for him. This was Rosie's choice. This is Malt the Walt by Raise the Roof Designs. This year I gave them the 2008 Just Cross Stitch ornament edition to look at. Um, if you've got this, the ornament edition, you'll know that, that I've changed the buttons because I just went for which buttons I could get. Um, so I put a little candy cane on and Rosie said that was fine as long as he had his carrot nose, which he does. And I'm in the process of doing the finishing, so this will be the finishing fabric for him. And some candy cane paint. So I'm hoping to get that finished in the next next couple of days. Christopher actually this year cho chose an ornament. He chose, he decided he wanted one from Amy Brooker 
Brooklyn Designs. It's called I Believe. The original design is charted for Weeks Dye Works. I didn't have the colours it called for, so I swapped them out. I did a conversion to Gloriana Silks. I've got a large collection of Gloriana Silks from my days of being in the Collectors Club with traditional stitches. So I, uh, it was nice to actually get to stitch with some of the beautiful colours I've got there. Um, if this is on a piece of a very early Silk Weaver. I was in the Silk Weaver Fabric of the Month Club um, for a few years up to 2000. This tells you how early Silk Weaver it is. And for this one, I'm just going to use this um, linen to back it. So that's three of my seven finishes for the year all done in the last sort of month. One of my biggest challenges for stitching this year was I start in January I started a permanent job which I meant I think I mentioned in my first video I work at a further education college. Um, it's full-time hours. I'll bet on a term time only basis so um, my biggest challenge is just finding enough time to stitch time to stitch because obviously when you work 37 hours a week and you have a busy family it can be challenging so the other finishes I've had for this week so one of the things I want to get better at in 2019 is managing my time so I get a bit more stitching in it would be nice to get more than three or four hours a week I think you all agree and I'm a much nicer person However, one of my other finishes for this year was this just little just nan design. It's called Beehive Violets. I have a lot of the very early little charts that Nan did, um, and I really want to get try and get some of my little stuff stitched. Um, so this is, I think, this is all stitched in the recommended DMC and Krynik with the beads and the bee charm. Not quite sure I'm going to finish this. I was hoping to put it in the lid of a little shaker box I bought but it's just when I stretch it it's just going to be a touch too big so it might end up being a pink heap or a little cushion. I haven't quite decided yet. My other finishes for this year were actually last year's children's or Christmas ornaments for the kids. Last year we were in New Zealand over Christmas so obviously I didn't get quite as much, didn't get them, it wasn't quite the urgency to get them finished before I went. So this is Christopher's, he wouldn't choose an ornament, he didn't choose an ornament last year so I've, I chose for him and it's Dragon Dreams checking the list and I've got this lovely rich um, burgundy fabric to go on the back. Again I'm hoping to get these finished in the next couple of days while well, before I go back to work and Rosie's choice was Sue Hillis Designs um, Spool Tree. Both of these came from the 2007 Christmas Ornament Edition and I've got this pretty mitten well, as it means stocking print to go on the back that matches the colours and again I'm hoping I can get that finished finished so next year it would be really nice to have a few more bigger finishes as well as a few lots of small finishes but I'm going to talk later about how I'm getting on with that Since my last video, I was lucky enough to go and to a class with Nicola Parkman of Hands Across the Sea, sea Samplers. Um, it was for the Bathia sampler, which I'm sure you've seen online. It's an absolutely exquisite reversible sampler. So we had a two day workshop at Fobbles in the Lake District where Nicola 
went through a lot of the techniques we will we'll need to stitch Bathia. So the workshop was actually doing a doodle cloth with just a few of the motifs on it and here is mine. I haven't finished yet, there's another section down here um, with practicing the reversibility, you know, stopping and starting reversibly, how to make it, make sure you're it's all right on both sides. So that was the one side. And this is my reverse. I don't think I did too badly. Whether I will actually, when I come to stitch Pathia, stitch irreversibly is another matter. I may decide life is too short and I'd rather get her finished. But um, I've got plenty of time to decide that. So my doodle cloth is actually pearlized barley um, from Lakeside Linens that um, I had left over from stitching. This is the same linen I'm using for Dorothy Walpole. And um, the colours are just some DMC that I um, sort of eyeballed Nicola's doodle cloth and chose some colours while I was in Fobbles to stitch them with. Quite looking forward to getting back to this but I don't know when that'll be at the moment. When I actually come to stitch Bathia I will be stitching her in the Avoir Soir silks. This is my silk pack on some 40 count Newcastle which came as part of the class. So I said I wanted to try and finish stitch some more of my small pieces. So one way I thought about doing that was to try uh, was to adapt the high tea start that they do on the Friday off the grid stitching group on Facebook. Um, but instead of doing it on the last Sunday of the month. I've decided I'm going to start a new small piece on the first of the month. So I started this back in November. So on the decided to do this back in November. So on the first of November, I started this little scissor fob and floss tag design that I've been given by Jackie of. Jackie Duplessis of It's Finally, fin Finally Finished and um, she gave all of us who took her September morning class three years ago this little kit and this is my start so far on the scissor fob. Um, shouldn't take a lot of stitching when I get there. Um, there's the silk. It's very pretty shades of pink and purple my card you might see it better there we go. and on the 1st of December I started this piece from Just Nan it's called Tiny Twill Heart and was released in 2002 I think the chart was free with the silk and the charm, which is a little Swarovski crystal goes in the middle. I think it was a market release that year, um, a limited edition, of course. And when I finished the small um, design I have a small section in my project in my rotation um, and when I finish my small um, project I'll start for, I will pick these ones back up and put them in if I'm just when I finish a rotation piece I tend to go for quite a complicated piece and I want to finish I have loads of designs that actually won't take that long if I get them got to get on and stitch them and that's today's the first. I am planning, I plan my new start. I'm going, a friend of mine 
gave me this very cute little kit, very generously gave me this cute little kit from Mary Cox. It's called Needles for Williamsburg. It came with the hand painted box and is a kit for making a little needle book. So, and literally all the stitching is just the needles for Williamsburg and some numb stitch around the outside and then it's finishing it. So I'm hoping I can get a good start on that one today. I've already mentioned my rotation. I really want to stick, get that motoring this year. What works for me is not doing a timed rotation, but just changing projects every week. Say so I don't get a huge amount of stitching time in a week. I tend to stitch Friday through Monday, and then I knit Tuesday through Thursday, just because in the middle of the week, it tends to be a bit crazy around here with all the kids' activities and work. And so it, the knitting's just a little easier to pick up and put down. Whereas at the weekends, I have a little more headspace. So I'm going to have a four piece, four pieces in my rotation. Um, a large, a medium and a small piece. And then one of my many class projects as a focus piece. So I'll work on a large project, then my focus piece, then my medium project, then my focus piece, etc. etc. You get the idea. The large project, no one will be surprised to know, is Dorothy Walpole. Continues to be Dorothy Walpole. Mm. And I would, I had a goal of trying to get it finished last year, but we'll see how well that went. Um, let's see how I do this year. I'm going to keep going and see if I can get, get her done, see if I can get more. If I can manage my time better so I can get, get more than a few hours a week, it will help a lot. Since you last saw her, I've just finished a little bit more of that strawberry band. Hopefully next time I pick her up that will completely that will get totally done. And for those who don't know, there's the car finished Dorothy Walpole. I'm down to here, so I'm past the halfway point. I don't have that much more to do, just the flowers, and they look like they're going to be much more fun to stitch than some of the other bits. As I mentioned before, she's being stitched on 40 Count Lakeside Linen in Perlise bar Barley and with the recommended DMC. My medium sized project is Home of a Needleworker 2 by Little Has Needleworks. Um, I'm very confident I can get this one finished this year because I don't have that much more. I'm past the halfway point on this one. Um, I got a good chunk of the house stitched. Last, this is the one that I'm currently working on and I did get a good chunk of the house stitched last night. So the joys of being on holiday. That's really what I need to get better at is when I'm not working, making sure I make time to do stitch, knit, sew etc. Read. Rather than just sort of losing time on Instagram. I'm stitching this one with the call for crescent colours. Um, quite liking the old blue jean of the house and the red that uh, is in the berries. I think it's raspberry something. don't quite remember the name of the colour and I can't quite reach it. My current small piece is this pink cushion from Lauren Sauer of Forget Me Nots in Stitches which is one she designed for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee back in 2012. Again I think I'm slightly past the halfway point in that I have finished the top and I'm on to the second. I had hoped to be the bottom. 
I had hoped to be a lot further along, however, when I revisited it, I came, I found I'd actually stitched the outside square. It's a totally different size to the top, so it all had to be frogged and redone. One of the things I've done to hopefully mean I'll stitch a bit faster is I've invested in a very, in a nice powerful craft magnifying light. So I can actually see, because I've been struggling the last couple of years with light and my eyes getting old. Um, so yes, so I've got the bottom to finish on that one, um, which is nowhere near as densely stitched as the top. It's just got um, some words. And then I've got the side band because it's a, a mattress, mattress pillow cushion so um then when i finish that i'll put the jackie fob in my rotation and when i finish that it'll be the just nan etc etc and then hopefully i'll have a few extra finishes and if... so my focus class piece is going to be Take a Lovely Sampler, which I've shown you before. Um, I took this class with Lauren back in 2006, so it is long overdue getting finished. I've stitched all the smalls. I just have to finish the stitching on the reticule. Um, so here's where I am, since you last saw it, I've finished all the stitching along the top of the reticule, uh, started the next next row, and that'll have some eyelets in between, which is where you thread the ribbon to do it up. So I'm hoping I will get this finished relatively quickly. Um, this is one project where having the proper light is making such a difference, um, apart from the fact I don't have seen all my mistakes. So yeah, so there's the pincushion, there's a little scissor fob, a scissor rest, and the needle book, which I started the finishing in the class in 2006, so kind of need to get it done. Right. So yes, yeah, so I'm hoping it, and when I finish, I have a pile of about 14 unfinished class projects. Um, so yes, so I'd like to get some of the earlier ones done. Um, I have this one and a CA Wells project that predate the children um, and various others. So my plan at the moment is when I finish this one, I've got a mix of sort of sets of smalls and samplers is I'll move on to a sampler and get that finished and then do another set of smalls, then another sampler, and work through them that way. The other project is I want to keep going with Santa Sundays. Um, still working on pomegranate sa Santa, because I put it down while I worked on the ornaments for the kids. Um, and I'm getting close to the halfway point on my Santa. At the moment I'm just sort of filling in a lot of the snow at the bottom. But I think when I get motoring with that and get on to doing some more of the fun stuff up here, it'll grow quite quickly again. Um, so yeah, looking forward to getting him done and stitching him using the recommended threads on some vintage light exemplar, 36 count light exemplar from Lakeside Linens. And that is the state of the stitching going into 2019. So see how I do at the end of the year with those. Right, on to knitting. I do have a knitting finish since I last spoke to you. I finished rosy socks. These are the Hermione's Everyday Socks from Dreams in Fibre. 
burn it in Jonip So um, Merino Nylon Sparkle Sock in the Black Butterfly colourway. And Rosie chose the yarn herself when we went to spring into wool. And she's very, very pleased. I've actually had to hide these since they were last washed because otherwise she, I don't get them off her feet. So she'll be pleased to get them back. So with those, that took me to five knitting finishes. Five. Five knitting finishes for the year. I, at the beginning of the year, I finished another pair of socks. These are the Bob socks from Lewis Tilbrook Designs. They knit in some nylon, Brits, British woolen nylon sock, sock yarn from the Knitting Goddess in the Distressed Pudding colourway, which was one of her colourways for the Back to the Discworld Sock Club in 2016. I finished one sweater. This was for Rosie. This is a hoodie that she saw the yarn and pattern for. It's some King Cole yarn. It's called Riot. The colourway was Rainforest. I can't say I was hugely fond of knitting this because the yarn's a bit, it's a very high acrylic content um, and a bit plasticky, but you know, knitting for children. And it's useful to have stuff that goes through the washing machine. Um, she's quite she's quite thrilled with it. So and then I finished two shawls. The Maytham shawl that you saw last time by Helen Stewart. And Citron Grand. This is just a larger version of the free shawl you can find on Knitty. I'm afraid I didn't make any note of the designer. I think it's Hillary. No, I think her first name is Hillary. Yarniad is her um, Instagram handle. Um, this is knitting some lace weight yarn that I'd had in my stash for a long time that I bought at Bar and U um, that they'd had custom dyed for them. It's a BFL and silk mix and was lovely to wear in this hot summer that we've just had. I mean, I'm, I'm not planning on changing how I'm knitting next year. I have one garment on the needles, I have one shawl on the needles and I have one pair of socks on the needles. And I'm planning on sticking with that because it seems to be working for me. And I alternate between the, gar the garment and the shawl once a week and the socks get knit at swimming lessons and dancing and karate and anything else where I have to sit and wait for the children. So... After I finished Rosie's Hermione's Everyday Socks, I cast on a pair for myself. Um, I'm kind of mixing up my fandoms with this one because this yarn is, again, by the Knitting Goddess. It's the British wool and nylon sock yarn, again, in from her Back to the Discworld Club. Um, the colourway is car, car bar Boredom. And if I remember right, I think he was a, they were a troll. Um, although, as I commented to my daughter, the colour the colourway looks vaguely Slytherin. So, sort of. So yeah. So there's those are Hermione's everyday socks by Dreams in Fiber. And when I finish those, we'll see. I join. I've got a load of sock patterns from Helen Stewart because I was in the Handmade Sock Society last year 
and didn't haven't yet knit any of them. I do have some yarn for a couple of pairs of those, so I may well get on do maybe the uh, winter rose socks next, but we will see, or I may just do a plain set of uh, some fair bit of self-strifing sock yarn. I may just crank out a pair of uh, pair of just plain vanilla socks because they're quite good when I'm trying to watch the um, swimming lesson at the same time. As far as my gar the garment goes, I'm still working on the Scolle cardigan. Um, that's being knit in Blacker Lioness, um, which is the 50% Falklands wool, 50% linen in the hematite colourway. And since you last saw it, I have finished the bulk of the body and have moved on to stitching the sleeves and have made some very good progress on the first sleeve for this last week with being off work. Um, and yes, I like to knit. I'm a DPN girl. I'm not a I don't like magic loop and uh, can only cope with circulars if I've got a really short cable and I didn't have um, one I'd got but I did have DPNs so I knit those. Um, when I finish Scolle, which I won't take too long, um, I'm very drawn to knitting a sinister cardigan. Um, you may have seen these on Ravelry. Rosie's after one as well. Um, fancy doing a bit of colour work. The pattern is by Anne Contin Catherine Begg. I've probably absolutely massacred the Gallic there. Um, it's not one of my strongest points. Um, Marna Gilligan is the um, designer. Um, yeah, Rosie and I are quite looking. Rosie wants one as well, and I think it's uh, if I knit the smallest size for her, um, but I might knit mine first. The shawl I have on the needles is the Fairy Hill shawl still. I how how am however almost almost finished. I have two more rows to knit and then the cast off. So I'm hoping I can be getting this blocked before I go back to work next on Monday. Um, yeah. As always, with one of Helen's designs, it's been absolutely fun to stitch. Uh, I have sort of messed up the lace in the last, I discovered this morning, but not so badly that I'm prepared to rip it back. Um, this is being knit in um, border tart amethysts four ply sock yarn which is 75% superwash merino 20% nylon and 5% stellina and has this very lovely silver sparkle in it and just the very faintest of blue overwashes from the indigo over the pink but very appropriate for something called fairy hill so the next time I record that should and the new, my next shawl cast on. I'm going to take a break from knitting a Helen Stewart shawl and knit one by Kate Davis. Um, my, I'm going to knit the Polgaris kerchief. I made a couple of trips to New Zealand in the last few years because my sister lives out there. And on my first trip out there, I bought this yarn. Um, Zilana Air, which is a mix of cashmere and brush tail possum down. Possums are an absolute pest in New Zealand. Um, so in a lot of ways, it's quite good that they can harvest their fur for, uh, for yarn. 
and it's very very soft and I've been I, and I bought it thinking I'll make a stripy kerchief never quite got round to it and then of course Kate Daly's brought out the pattern so why do I need I don't need to bother I'll just do what she does she does it so much better than I can um, so yeah looking forward to starting on that and that should be a nice easy knit when I finish that I'll be back to Helen Stewart shawls I've got two two loads of the um, shawl society kitted up two sets of season one and season two all kitted up with the yarn and ready so I just need the time to knit so I think that might be I'll be knitting one of those shawls next um, and then we'll see Helen I know is talking about another sock society and another shawl society for next year and I'm sure there'll be a mystery shawl knit along that I will want want to do so we shall see um, so I'm likely to get distracted by something pretty Helen just does them so well otherwise I would the other thing I want to do this year is try and find some time for a little bit of sewing I did find a little bit of time at the beginning of December and made this little tree topper which was a free kit with Molly Makes magazine, which I've been getting since it came out. As Rosie loves the magazine as well. And this went on the top of the tree in the because the top of the, the tree in the staff room at work didn't have anything on it, so I made that to go on the top of the staff room. Very cute. Just took me the weekend to do. So because I have several um. I would really like to make some more time for sewing and finishing and other things this year. I have various sewing projects on the go already. Rosie and I are in the process of making her a dress and have been for about 18 months now. So we really need to get it. I mean, I did cut it with plenty of growing room. Never do anything for the kids without plenty of growing room. But we still need to get it finished before she totally grows out of it. And I have this quilt that I've been piecing for Christopher. The top is done and I've done the sandwich and I just need to uh, actually quilt it. He um, chose the colours himself. So I'm not sure how much I can fit in, but it's, uh, it's, the one that's, uh, it's bright green on the back definite echoes of Minecraft in this but he keeps nattering so I really need to get it done and bound and on his bed his sister got one it did take me over four years to do hers as well so so yeah so I'd like to do that I'd like to do some dressmaking for myself um all on top of all working and housework and running around after the kids and um, everything else but we shall see and cycling I do a lot of cycling that's my main method of keeping fit um, I realize I'm not actually told you about my cardigan and um, this is one I made knit in 2016 it's the Manu cardigan from um, Kate Davis again I like her cardigans um, and I've knit a couple of Kate's cardigans. I have a deco cardigan as well, and they're both both uh, suit me very well and wear beautifully. This is knit in Wensleydale Longwall. Um, is there anything else? Reading. I'm not going to share what I've been reading, other than to say I hit. I had a reading goal this year of reading 48 books. Um, in the year which is four books a month and I did last yesterday I finished the last one and hit that goal and um, very pleased I've been able to do that I've been trying to get up to four books a month for a couple of years now so I shall be hoping to take it up a notch and try and read one book a week read 50 and make get another four books in to make it to 52 not sure how long that will take me to do. I've done a lot better at carving out time to read. I read at my lunch, my lunch breaks at work are when I read and on the bus. 
going home from work in the bus on the mornings it's instagram because there's free wi-fi um and i don't have a brain power for anything else it's just drink coffee and browse instagram um so yeah so i want to I want to read a slightly wider variety of books next year. I keep a, I have a sort of a spreadsheet with a log of what I've read. Most of my books were fiction, most of them were written by women. Um, I'd like to read a few more non-fiction books. We'll see how that goes. Um, I want to keep reading my stack of Viragos, I want to keep reading my stack of Persephone's and my stack of children's literature and all the other books. I have a to read pile that's around 600 books high. So, um, Anyway, so that's my plans for next year. This year, this year, I'm going to have to stop saying next year. For this year, so, as I said, I wish you all a very happy new year. I hope 2019 is kind to you all. I hope it's a lot kinder to us um, than it in 2018 was. Um, and thank you for joining me. If you like what you see, please do subscribe, leave a comment or like. It's all very much appreciated. Thank you very much.